Alrighty YouTube, welcome back to a finally completed boost pipe engine bay of Rat 10. Last video you saw me make these stainless boost pipes from scratch, finally connecting this giant turboner into the intercooler, into the intake, and obviously now to the Mercruiser 140 boat engine. Which leads me into where we're gonna start with today's video. The hood pipe is off the back because I'm actually not gonna be running one for a little while at least. Don't get me wrong, I love having the exhaust come out of the hood with a tractor flap on it. It's hilarious, it sounds awesome. But lately in Edmonton area, Alberta, where I live, there's been lots and lots and lots of reports of vehicles that are too loud and people getting pulled over and just getting tickets for loud exhaust. So I'm actually gonna try to build something sensible for a little while until maybe it calms down. I never had any issues with the exhaust I had on it before. I'm just preparing for the worst. So I'm gonna build a full exhaust. Now, a little bit of a spoiler, I was actually digging into this a little bit because I have this three inch pipe here and off that I cut this 90. I'm slowly discovering that building a full exhaust in the space that I currently have available is, um, it's not gonna be easy. There's, there's not a lot of room right here, if you could tell. The other thing that I mentioned in the last video as well, this big heckin' chonker here. It's not gonna work with the flanges I have. I think I was debating welding one of the V-bands onto this and then welding off the V-band to do the exhaust and whatnot. That's just kinda gonna be ghetto. This looks like it's cast and I kinda don't really wanna screw with that. This is also stainless and then the only pipe I have is that three inch over there, which is mild. So I'm already welding mild to stainless and I don't wanna weld stainless to supposedly cast. So, Here's the new plan. This guy, not gonna work. I'm going to use this with this quarter inch plate sitting here. This was the, the custom flange that I made just to use this to actually run the truck in the first place. But the hole is for a two and a half inch pipe. I suppose I could hog it out and weld three inch to it, but I'm a little more complex than that. So what I'm gonna do is, we'll trace it out, hole saw out a blank. My dad needs the blank for a project that he's doing. Take my plate over to his house to use his plasma cutter, cut this out. From there we'll weld one of the three inch V-bands onto that. And then on the other V-band, we'll start building the exhaust off of that. Trusty eyeballs for getting center on this bad boy. And yeah, right there, first try. Oh dude, I am good at this. Look at that, that's dead center. Why did I touch that? <laughs> so load this up, go get some plasma cutting done. Oh yeah. Didn't think I forgot you, did you? This is a far better starting point than uh, anything I'm gonna rough cut. Let's do some cleanup with my grinder and get moving. Okay, the main part is done. Let's get to cutting some of this stuff. So I want to make one of these, but a much tighter radius. And if you don't know how to do that, there's a technique known as pie cuts. You basically take from a straight pipe, angled slices of metal, and you weld them together to get an extremely tight radius 90. This is, ooh, that's almost five inch radius. What I think I'm gonna do is I want slices of straight pipe that are 15 degrees overall, meaning I will need six of them to make one 90 degree bend. I need to take this pipe into this chop saw. I need to set the angle of this to be not 15 degrees to the cutting surface. You need one here and then one the opposite direction to get that curve. So 15 divided by two is seven and a half, meaning I need to set this seven and a half degrees to that blade, cut it, 
move it, turn it, cut it, and then, then we will have 15 degree pieces. I've got this guy here, which I have currently set to roughly eyeballed. That's to seven and a half degrees. Square it onto the blade, and I'll know exactly where I need to set that pipe to. Okay, I think that's probably as close as we're gonna get. Okay, I think we're ready to start some cuts. Okay, a line is there so I know where 180 is. That's the hope. It does indeed look like that's about a 15 degree pie cut. I could probably cut these a little smaller, actually. Okay, <laughs> there's my 90. Oh, I love chop saws. I'm debating if I want to do these on here or if I just want to angle grinder with a flap disc. Let's see how fast this goes first. Ah, that cleanup sucked. Ah, oh, let's go see what we can turn this into. Here's the official comparison. Here is a three inch 90 that I got with my U-Bend, Mandrel Bent pipe. <laughs> and here is the, uh, here's the 15 degree pie cut. It literally fits within the inside radius. That is crazy. Man, I wish I learned this skill earlier. Let's uh, zip some of these together. Can you fuse mild steel the same way as stainless? I guess we'll find out. I forgot how much more heat mild steel takes than stainless. <laughs> Look at that nice tight 90. That's awesome. I can't believe how small you can make a 90 just from some accurate cuts. You can go check the fitment difference of this one here. Much too large. Oh yeah. Probably actually just go like this. That's already most of the way out of the engine bay right there. Like, that's awesome. Let's go weld this thing up fully. Now, I know this is mild steel, but I am just gonna try fusion welding it together and seeing how it does. Okay, that took me 40 minutes to weld together. That is something. And yeah, sadly, and there was one spot where I did blow a hole through. I'm not super concerned about that because I can just fill it up and I think we'll be okay. Here is the next plan. I have managed to jam the stainless V-band onto my little 90. Now my original plan was to weld the V-band onto the flange so I can have this be removable and you know in the future if I ever want to I can put on an extension for like a hood pipe or something. The main problem with welding the V-band onto this flange it's actually sticking out almost as far as the mandrel bent piece was in the first place so that's not gonna happen. What I'm gonna do is weld the V-band to this guy weld this in here like this at whatever specific angle is the easiest to get the exhaust down and out. Let's see if we can manage to weld this piece of stainless onto this piece of mild. I have no idea how this is going to work. Huh. I was actually able to tack that. I wonder if I could actually fusion weld that the whole way. You know what? Might actually work. It looks welded. It's 
pretty good, actually. Huh. Yeah, I figured I was gonna need filler on that one part. That's not a pretty weld. Oh well. Ah, oh, fusion welding is awesome. It just melts together. God, I wish I could do this for every weld. Okay, we just did that one, we did that one, that one, this one, this one. Let's go here. <laughs> it's a little toasty, but check out that. It's really nice, except for the spot I used filler in. Let's check if it worked. Oh, yeah. You'll love to see it. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, I'm really happy with that. That's awesome. Awesome, man. That is so cool. Let's go determine the angle. I need to weld this onto this this at. I haven't even checked if these holes line up to be honest. I just drilled them and then was like, yeah, it's probably fine. I just have to angle the one off the back of the turbo down far enough. Oh God. That it clears everything else somewhat well. That's not what I wanted to do. Actually, the way I had it sitting there is not bad. She is tight though. Holy. Okay. I think that's all right. I just went to fit it in and realized I do not have sweet shit for room for this V-band clamp in multiple ways. This is too close to the steering shaft. This is too close to my flange. And then the bolt here also doesn't go in. So I wish I wouldn't have been so confident and done so many tacks because I now need to grind them and take this off. And I think what I need to do is just make a little bit of a riser because this pie cut is actually so tight that I have a little bit more wiggle room. Probably a half inch piece of pipe that I can weld onto this guy to move it out a little bit and then we'll weld to this flange and start doing the exhaust. Yeah, I don't have, don't have the room right now. Oops. Okay, I have a little piece of pipe for an extension. That little extension should give me just the amount of room that I need. Well, maybe not just, but pretty damn close. Let's see if we can do some surgery to that big ass hole that we blew in here. Yeah, that is, uh, that is ugly. <laughs> oh, yuck. We're not gonna look at the inside. The hole is filled up, so that's all I care about. Fuse this bad boy together and get on with our day. That is a pretty piece of pipe, you know? I'm finally happy with something I TIG welded. This is, this is new to me. Look at that. Look at that. Aside from the, the holes that I blew in it, you know, but God, that's cool. This should give me plenty of room for that flange. What I can do is I can probably weld this from the inside and have a nice seamless flange. I like that idea. Let's go see if that uh, screwed my other pipe. Okay. Debating right now if I want to take the time to cut some more pie cuts just to save a bit of space in there. I could probably do it. Ah, yeah, I'll go cut some more pie cuts. May as well get some more experience while I'm doing it. Uh, all this work for some shitlocks exhaust that's probably gonna break within two months of using it. All right, let's go cut some pie. Oh, my fingers are hot. I probably don't need six of these to do a full 90. I just cut them 
just in case. So let's tack a bunch of them on and see how many we need. Okay, I'm only gonna start by tacking three of these guys together because I might be able to get away with what I need to do with a 45. This guy can get jammed in there. That is so cool. <laughs> oh, I love that. Let's go see how that fits. As time consuming as pie cuts are, I think I just found my favorite way to weld exhaust systems now. Now I only did a 45 because I don't know if I can fit a 90. Okay, no, a 90 is not going to fit. I do need to add probably one more piece. I'll be right back. All right, let's see if 60 degrees is better. I might actually end up building a full 90. Okay, that's, that's not so bad. That is not bad at all. I'm going to go tack a short straight section of pipe onto this just to see. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah, I like that. That is beautiful. And we can start welding this together. finally be ready to weld that. Okay, I guess there's one thing I want to point out here. I was sending my buddies Snapchats of the work I was doing because I'm actually really happy with the way it's turning out. And he mocked me because apparently the male flange of a V-band is supposed to be upstream. I was uh, completely unaware of that. Not that I really think it matters. It's a, it's a, it's a three inch downpipe and there's not gonna be a muffler on rat 10, so I'm not super concerned about that. But apparently there's a direction for your V-band. Who would know? That was painful. Scratch that, I need to take a quick break because this torch is cooking my hand. Okay, how long did that take me? 38 minutes, holy butt. <laughs> Look at that. That is beautiful. Check it out, we didn't even warp the flange either. That is awesome. Okay, this thing I'm going to take my flap disc to and just buzz that bead down nice and flat because it is interfering with the turbo and we can go get this stuff installed. I'm still debating if I want to try to shove a heat shield down there. It is awfully close to the rubber part of those fuel lines. Okay, I have decided to make a heat shield and I'll show you why. Right down through here is where the exhaust is going and my three inch pipe quite literally gonna take up most of this gap right here. The fuel filter is kind of close, but there's, there's enough of an air gap that I'm not really worried about it. But the rubber lines I'm kind of concerned for, so, I'm gonna make a piece of sheet metal basically to fit this L right here. And then there's one bolt hole where my finger is here and we'll bolt it on that way. And I think we'll be good to go. So you may notice rat 10 is now shoved out of the way and there's a big puddle on the ground there. Well, there's a, a bit of a leak I have discovered here. I'll show you. So I'm not 100% sure exactly when it happened, but at some point, probably during the power steering, something jammed itself into the radiator. The coolant is actually still actively dripping out of it. So that sucks. I don't know, I might have to, I'm gonna have to take my whole rad out to kind of fix that pinhole. I don't know if I can TIG weld that shut or not, but it saved me from ordering a new rad if that's the case. It saved me the frustration of dealing with leaking coolant while I'm underneath trying to do the exhaust. I'm just gonna drain the coolant out of this. I'll sort out the rad eventually, but today's goal is exhaust. Oh, no wait, heat shield. Gotta put the heat shield on first. Boom, it's just simple. It's just to hide the rubber fuel on so they don't catch on fire. All right, I'm hoping that bend should clear exactly where we need it. All right, let's see what you guys think about this silly little heat shield. Nothing special. It's just to hide 
the main rubber part of the fuel line back here that was going to be exposed to hot exhaust. The fuel filter is still a little close, but I'm confident that it's not going to get too boiled because there's, I don't know, a good inch or so air gap to it. If I have fuel boiling problems, we'll know where the culprit is though. Worst case, I can eliminate this filter and put it farther down the line wherever I need. Oh, this is going to be awkward one-handed. We should hopefully have, yeah. loads of room to get this guy down here. So I think it, it sits about here like this. So there's, there's quite the air gap of the fuel filter and now the rubber fuel lines are nice and protected. So this is mint. I'm gonna go silicone this guy on the back of the turbo, seal it up decently. The good news is for the most part, I think I can send a pipe straight down most of that and then 90 out. Let's see if I can actually go stuff this in here when it's welded together. This seemed promising. Oh yeah, there we go. I'm genuinely really surprised how well I was able to get the fitment of that to go straight down there. It's actually not bad. I do need to jack this thing up in the air though. Okay, I'm gonna try to stuff you under here so you can actually see what I'm doing. I don't have a lot of room to make what need to work work here. That is far too low. I could get this up somewhere over here. That'd be nice. Cause there's a nice straight shot through here to go above the cross member. It'd actually be somewhat decent. Okay, I just went and zapped that together quick. Um, I want to see if I can get this in from the top. If not, then we'll go from the bottom. Ha! I'm impressed. How does that look? Oh yeah! That's awesome. I suppose my angle could have been a little better on that. I can always ta take that off and move it. So yeah, I think I'll still cut that off and uh, turn it just a little bit. I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, I don't know if you can see that difference on camera. Oh, I gotta go tighten that clamp, hang on. I might have turned that just a little too much. <laughs> oh well. It's like one pie cut will get me pretty straight from there. I think that's gonna have to wait till next time though. It's getting pretty late here. Uh, it's Saturday night. I've literally spent all week on this. I'll crawl back up there and I'll talk you through here. Yeah, I think that is where I'm going to leave it for today. That being said, I'm extremely happy with the progress that was made today. Even though, yes, just to do this one downpipe took me pretty much all week. It goes down nicely. There's loads of clearance. If you saw from down below, it fits fantastically. I apologize for maybe the video being a little short or underwhelming, but I used this week to develop a new skill. This is the first time I've ever tried pie cuts and I wanted to make sure it was right, that it looked good. And I also tested some new theories of welding stainless to mild steel, a lot of fusion weld practice. I got a ton of TIG welding practice in here. I'm super happy for that. I think it's safe to say when I'm done, I'm gonna have the nicest exhaust system that I've ever built for one of my own ship boxes. So that I'm super excited for. I will give you a clip, however, of what it sounds like while it's running right now, because I too kind of want to hear what it sounds like. All right, so this is just with the the downpipe and the 90 to the engine about here. That's all we're getting. All right, let's see. <laughs> the camera probably didn't pick it up, but right when the exhaust cut off there, you could actually hear the turbo whistling out back. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Okay, now I'm super excited to see this full exhaust done. But that's gonna be it for me. Stay tuned for next time because we're gonna finish the full exhaust system. I have a funny idea for where I wanna put it. I don't know if we're gonna get that far exactly, but we'll see. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for sticking around and I hope you come back for more. Thanks for watching.